good morning professor chatterjee it's so good to be talking to you uh today um so let me start off by asking in all of your years as a mathematician what do you see as your legacy in this particular field of work so uh, you know it's uh, that's difficult to predict right now uh you know we will we'll see in 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 some years or many years maybe what will last and what will not uh and uh you know if you really want me to predict uh, maybe you know my work in uh, large deviations and concentration of measure you know that may be long lasting but you know it, it's hard hard to say right right now what uh, what may be the legacy of my work okay okay that's a fair answer i want to ask you next uh, who is something or what is something that inspires you so you know as a mathematician of course you know it's great math and uh, great mathematicians that inspire me but uh, but more generally you know any any great achievement of the human mind like uh, you know anything maybe in science and arts music literature you know, any anything like that is is very inspiring but you know the the difficult thing is that uh, you know i i know and understand so little and it's it's hard to learn difficult things and so you know having some kind of superficial knowledge is not very fulfilling but uh, you know we have to be often have to be content with that uh, you know so that's uh, you know that's very broadly what what inspires me that you know so many people have done so many great things and you know that's that's a big source of inspiration so professor uh, i'm sure that you would have met many inspiring um, academicians along your journey um Do you have any anecdotes about teachers and mentors who have guided you along uh, this path? Well, you know, the biggest influence uh, in my academic life, I think, has been my my advisor, uh, PhD advisor Percy Diaconis, and I, you know, I learned a lot of things from him. You know, not only about math and probability, but also about life. Uh, and um, you know, since you're asking me to share an anecdote, you know, here is one of my favorite ones. So. So when I was a student, uh, I once uh, told Percy that uh, you know I'm feeling very insecure uh, that you know uh, about my research uh, whether it's good enough or not, and you know Percy said uh, you know that's you know that's normal. All of us feel uh, insecure, and if you don't, you know just look at Gauss and you will feel insecure. You know <laughs> so uh, so the great mathematician uh, Gauss and um, uh, so so the, so the thing is you know. if you're not feeling insecure what i learned from that is that if you're not feeling insecure about your research and about your career then there is something wrong you know you should feel insecure you know every everybody does uh, there is no exception and uh, uh, and uh, you know there are uh, you know there are there are always greater heights to achieve uh, which you haven't and uh, so 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 it's just fine to feel insecure everybody does it and that's i think it's young people don't always know that they to look at uh, you know more senior people and the think oh why I, i can never be this secure and you know and confident and uh, uh, so that's one big lesson that i learned that day um so i think that even in a field uh, as exciting as research there may be times when there may be stretches of time when things can get long and frustrating so i wanted to ask you what is it that drives you to come back to the same problem day after day Yeah so uh, so it's okay so it's sort of like a, you know you see a video gamer somebody who plays video games and they want to achieve higher and higher levels you know and uh, and so so why do they do that because there is there is a lot of fun you know to achieve something which is very hard and very difficult and you don't know how to do it but you really want to do it and uh, and that gives you a huge amount of satisfaction when you when you keep achieving these levels and it's i think it's sort of the same drive and uh, it's not just not just fame or recognition that what other people will say so it's also something very internal that if you if you if you can do something that you had no idea how to do you know two months ago then you know it's it's a uh, it's a lot of fun to do that uh, all right so um i've seen that you from your ba days you've been into mathematics and uh, i wanted to i was interested to know what would you have become if you had not been a mathematician so uh, you know uh, i i always wanted to be a researcher you know when i was even when i was a child you know i wanted to be 
you know, scientist, I didn't know what, I didn't know whether to be a mathematician or a physicist or a computer scientist, but, you know, I wanted to go into research because, uh, you know, I was always a sort of a con contemplative person. I want to think and do my own things, create new things. So that, that's what I always had in mind. So it might have been that, uh, you know, I wouldn't survive the competition because there's a lot of competition. And, and then I would have to sit down and think, you know, what to do. But I never actually thought that. And, uh, you know, that may have been quite depressing, actually. But, uh, you know, I'm lucky to have survived. So that's, uh, that's all I can say about that. So great that you were focused uh, on research from the beginning. Uh, that's so great to know. All right. So um, more and more people nowadays are going into research, which is very promising. And India itself is uh, home to so, so much untapped potential. So what would your message be to aspiring researchers? Yeah, so the thing is, you know, I can say something quite generic, but I don't want to do that. So I have some something very specific about that, uh, which is, uh, you know, my message to young researchers, people who are just beginning is, you know, try to do things that are interesting to other people. And by other people, I mean great people in your field. So wherever, whichever field you are, you try to do something which would be interesting to the great people in your field. And um, and in many, many, research, many young researchers get into this, this thing that they they join the small clique of friends or you know and then they do things to impress each other and uh, and that can be that can be a negative thing that can be a bad thing so so do not take comfort in that do not take comfort in the appreciation of your small group of friends and you know try to do things that are that are really uh, you know lots of people will take notice the great people in your field will take notice you know try to do that kind of thing Okay, so what you're saying, I think that you need to surround yourself with people who are smarter than you, so you can be challenged yourself. Now, your specialty is probability, and that is also um, the area that you won the prize for. So, what got you interested in probability? So, you know, I remember quite clearly that I got interested in probability when I learned probability for the first time in high school, actually, maybe in class 11 or 12, uh, class 11, I think, uh, we learned probability. And uh, and that's when I got interested, uh, really. And uh, somehow I found it more interesting than some of the other things that we were learning. And then I went to ISI, which is a great place for probability and statistics. And so that solidified that, uh, you know, I, I, the Indian Statistical Institute has a great uh, atmosphere for probability. And uh, so uh, so I got even more interested. And, you know, that's when I decided that I'm going to probability. Yeah. yeah, it's not something that you hear everyone being interested in. So it's great to see how you got started. Um, so now um, that you are interested in mathematics, obviously it lends itself to the way that you approach problems um, as well. So how do you approach a problem and does intuition play a role in your problem solving? Um, yeah, so the so intuition, you know, if you want to call it intuition, I think that's the best description. Uh, that plays a role in, you know, in almost anything any of us do. And I'll give an example. So, so if you're a chess player, uh, you know, there. If you and if you look, want to look ahead, you know, four or five moves. Uh, there, are, you know, thousands upon thousands of comp combinations of moves that you can think of. But we don't think of that, right? So we think of what is the mo what are the most promising lines, and we think of a few lines. Of uh, and unless you know you're a computer, you know, you're a human being, then you then you think of that. So so what are you doing here? We are applying our intuition, right? So you have thousands of possibilities, and you and you just pick out a few using your guess, and then you try to judge among those few that what may work. And some people are just better at it than others, but, but all of us do this do the same thing. And in research, it's also the same. So, so there are many, many things that you can do, are many ways you can attack a problem and proceed, but then you have to use your intuition to select a few different uh, routes, and, uh, and then you, you go, go along that. And again, you know, some people are a little better than others, but, uh, uh, but all of us do, the, do this thing, and so, so we in that way, we use intuition. All of us use intuition, and and if you think about it in real life, also we use intuition in that sense. You know, that's the human approach to problem solving. All right. Uh, something that I love about research, and I think knowledge in general, is that it doesn't exist in isolation, and everything is dependent on other fields and other rules and laws. And which other disciplines? 
inspire you in honing your creativity when it comes to approaching your research? Yeah, there's actually a very easy answer to that uh, because, you know, I also do statistics uh, and so probability is my main area, but I have a joint appointment in the statistics department. I have a statistics training. And so statistics is very inspiring. And, uh, you know, mathematicians have this thing of working on problems that, you know, often working on problems that no, no one other than mathematicians care about. But being in a statistics department, I have this one foot in, in set in reality where you, you know, every week we have seminars and we, you know, I get to know what's going on in the real world, what, you know, scientists are interested in, you know, what kind, and, you know, data science and statistics is everywhere these days. So, so that is a big source of inspiration. And more than that, it helps me keep my foot on the ground and, uh, you know, not be too esoteric uh, somehow. Yeah. All right. Great to see. I mean, when we study probability and, you know, other math things uh, in school, there's always jokes about we're never going to use this in real life. But uh, I think probability especially is one of those things where it's so practical and you have to apply it. I think it is a famous saying that um, un you have not understood something unless you can explain it. To a six-year-old, I think that was the same. But we've increased the age a little bit. Uh, we want to ask you: How would you explain your research to a ten-year-old? Yeah, that's a that's a very hard question. You know, some of the questions were easy. This is a hard question, and uh, you know, the thing is, when I'm giving a talk, I can barely hold the attention of my academic peers, and so you know, uh, how can I hold the attention of a ten-year-old? You know, you'll just run away before I even finish. Yeah. Uh, the sentence, but uh, well, since you're asking, let me give it a shot. So, um, so a ten-year-old obviously wouldn't know what uh, is is probability. So I have to first start with that, and you know, I can say that it's a it's a math or science of uh, trying to predict uncertain things in the future, like you know, will it rain tomorrow, that kind of thing. And you know, I can say that it's it's a sort of like astrology, but with more success rate, you know, it's more successful uh, because uh, it's based in math and science. And so, so I'll give, a, give them an example. So I, I can tell them, you know, if you toss a coin, you don't know whether it's heads or tails, but if you toss a coin a hundred times, then I can say with a lot of confidence that the number of heads is going to be between 40 and 60, okay, roughly. So most of the time you're going to get between 40 and 60 heads, even though I, I cannot predict uh, the, the outcome of an individual toss. And then I can I can tell them that you know you can try it out in a spare time. Actually, toss a coin a hundred times and see if if my answer is correct. Um, and well, if they're still there, have not run away. So then I can tell them the next step is that well, let's say instead of a hundred times, you toss a coin a million times. Okay. So then I can have a much narrower, relatively narrower band. So I can say with very high confidence, ninety nine percent confidence that. And the number of heads is going to be between 498,500 to 501,500. So it's a very, very narrow band that I can say that with high confidence that uh, the number of heads is going to land in that. Um, so, so this kind of prediction that is giving a range uh, where uh, you know you you want to predict something in the future and uh, and obviously you cannot predict it exactly what's going to happen if it's an uncertain event, but giving a range is one of the areas in probability what we do, it's called concentration of measure. So uh, so a lot of my work is in concentration of measure. So this example is a very simple example that you know every undergraduate student will know how to do this. But, uh, uh, but then there are much more complicated problems, which you know, if, this, if the 10 year old is still interested, you know, then I'm in the presence of a little Einstein maybe. So, so then, then I can tell him uh, a little more, but, uh, uh, but you know, by now maybe it's enough. So, uh, so, so there are more complex versions of these questions where you have to make predictions and you have to actually give some range of predictions and you know, how do you compute that kind of a range you know, is, is what concentration measure does. And that's one part of my research doing concentration measure. Wow. wow, thank you for that explanation. Uh, I'm sure your children will have a lot of fun times with you. <laughs> I wish I had someone to explain things like that when I was young. I would definitely have been more interested. All right, Professor, so I'm sure this is something that many people would have asked you already. Uh, but can you use probability to win the lottery? Uh, not really. I mean, uh 
you know, uh, I never play the lottery, but, uh, you know, some people do. And uh, actually, you know, I've had journalists ask me that question, you know, what are the odds, that kind of thing. And uh, actually, some very well-informed journalists uh, here who uh, ask me in great detail various probability questions like that. And so, you know, if you have a, if there is a specific uh, thing then you can try to answer, but in general, you know, winning the lottery is uh, is very low odds. Uh, so uh, you know, uh, some people win the lottery, but most people don't. Uh, and uh, uh, but in some sense, you know, we are always playing the lottery, right? Uh, in in life, that uh, you know, we, it, it, we we plan things in the future, but they often don't turn out the way we plan them to be. So so you know, <laughs> life is constant lottery and. Uh, uh, what probability does is that uh, it can sort of get some determinism even out of this randomness. So that's uh, that's one big area in probability that you know everything is happening randomly, but there, there are some things that you can you can say with more or less certainty that this uh, this is going to happen. You know that's how weather forecasts are made, made, for instance. So so nobody knows for sure exactly how things will behave, but they will say, you know, 80% chance of rain tomorrow, you know, that, that kind of thing. And those are all based on stochastic models. And they give, give out these numbers. And when you see 80%, you know there's a good chance of rain. And often it turns out to be correct that it's raining the, the next day if, if there's an 80% chance of rain, if it's a good weather forecast model. Uh, and, uh, and so th this is the kind of thing that we can do with probability, that uh, we can say whether some things are very likely versus not very likely, and uh, you know that that can be very helpful uh, often. All right. Now coming to our final question: How has winning the Infosys Prize for Mathematical Sciences impacted your life? Well, it certainly made me happy, uh, you know, because getting any kind of recognition like that, major recognition from uh, one's academic peers, is is a very, very satisfying thing. And it's a dream of every researcher, I think, to get this kind of recognition from their, from their peers. Uh, and uh, so that has made me happy. And also, you know, people who love me and care about me, you know, they are also very happy and proud about it. And that's, that's made me even more happy. So, and, you know, getting happy is a good thing somehow, um, because, uh, well, getting very happy is not a good thing. You know, you need to be a little anxious, uh, you know, to make progress. But, uh, Getting happy is a good thing because a uh, happy state of mind, uh, um, uh, you know, helps creativity. I think I think the psychologists have actually, you know, studied that, and uh, uh, so so that it, it's good. It's good to have uh, occasional, you know, recognition which uh, makes you more satisfied with yourself and uh, and it keeps you in a good state of mind and then uh, you know helps you create more. So that's. That's overall a good thing, and uh, you know that's mainly until now. I mean, it's just been a few months, so that's mainly how it has impacted my life. So we'll, we'll see what happens. All right, Professor Chatterjee, thank you so much uh, for sitting down with us today and answering all of our questions. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you very much.